Hi, Al. Anyone who's there? I don't know. I don't know. What is this? Hello, Wesley. How are you? Uh, I know I look like death. I look like a panda. Look at this. You see these big black circles around my eyes? It's a panda. This is a panda that's been shopping and has bought too much bamboo. That's what this is. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to actually start with this holiday haul because I got a lot of stuff to get through. And uh, I just have to do some rearranging because I've got a lot on the table. It's quite fragile. So I have to move it onto the magic worktop over there. Oh, what you ah, Snoopus is like, oh, I don't think I can afford that. Do you have any special offers going, Wes? <laughs> Packing for the Snoofer Society. The Snoofer Society of Stuffles. Also, where do we start? Do we start with, because we've got, as you know, what, what do we have? We have a uh, literature and uh, a Disney. So which do we start with? Literature or Disney? I'll leave that to you. And then there may be uh, the potential for your choice. Wait, you're inhaling. Why? What? Oh, for heaven's sake, don't have a heart attack. That'll never do. Oh. What do you want first? Disney or literature? Because I have got a lot to go through. I bought too much stuff. I, I had money. I had to get rid of it. And I bought too much stuff. God, I look awful, don't I? Do I look awful, eh? I've been awake for 30 plus hours. I've had less than an hour's sleep. I look awful. Look at this. This is like, I don't know what it is. How do we change the thingamajigger? I don't know what a thingamajigger is, but how do we change it anyway? What do we start with? Do, 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 do. Ooh, I just got a reply. Ooh, considering I haven't slept a lot, I'm looking good. I don't think so. I don't think so. I was actually, YouTube keeps blocking your messages for talkers. Yes, it does that to me too. I don't like that. Um... I should do what first? Literary Disney. Well, you can't do that. You can't do literary Disney. It doesn't work like that. I've got so much to get through. Because we have a couple of pins. A little bit of tiny little bit, bit of limitism, a little bit of jewellery. We have some figurines. Uh, some random merchandise. Very random, very, very small random merchandise. And then we have Bookingtons. What do we start with? I would number everything, but I'd lose count. So. <laughs> I would. Do, 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 do. Got to be Disney, unless I decide otherwise. Okay, shall we get the pins out of the way first? Get the pins and the jewellery out of the way first. Okay, so start off with. Um, just an open edition from, I got all these from Animal Kingdom actually. I got them all in one place, like they had them in other other places. Um, but I struggled to find them in Magic Kingdom. I don't know why, Magic Kingdom the first day, there was very little there, unless you were very, very rich or very, very young. It was hard to find anything. Anyway, I found this lovely... Alice pin among the daisies. I don't know how well that's showing up. It's the camera's a bit blurry. I think it's the light. Shall we do something with the light? Let's do something with the light. We will try that one. How's that? Uh, it's not brilliant. Okay. How's that one? That, oh, I was going to say video in the dark. That's my best lighting. Um, does that work? Does this work or is it still too fuzzy? Is it fuzzy? It's fuzzy. Okay. I'll swap to the Ah, oh, there we go. I, I look so, so so good in the dark, don't I? Yes. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, it's seeable. What's seeable? I'm not seeable. Oh, 
I'm not seeable. I'm, I might be sealable. Resolution. The fuzzy is, I don't know how to deal with this stuff. You know that. You know I'm not a, 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 a techno geek. I, I know nothing about technology. Anyway, I've just been wishing on for five minutes about absolutely nothing. The camera's resolution is low because I don't know what to do with it because I'm an idiot. So, <laughs> but I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm a very happy idiot. Anyway, I hope you can see, okay? So here's a little Alice pin. Um, I don't know what these prices were, but just among the daisies at the beginning of the film. Very, very pretty. I don't know how old it is. I've not been following pin releases this year. Um, we've also got Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh with the little 3D, it's called the 3D effect because there's like a sort of rubbery element to his carrot or his carrot. <laughs> um, I just thought this was so cute and it might look nice in my very small Winnie the Pooh collection. So far, yes. What's this? Not knowing something doesn't make you an idiot. In my case, it does. It's just because you haven't learned yet or do not seek to learn it. No, I don't. I seek to learn all the random information that I will never actually need to know. So that's important to note. Um, what do we have it? Oh, yes. Uh, Dumbo. Well, not technically Dumbo, but I don't have any pins of him. And he's so cute. It's Timothy Mouse. I love Timothy. And I think his name is really cute as well. I like Timothy. He's so sweet. He looks like a little... Um, I want to say majorette, but does that work? Because he's male. How can you be a majorette if you're male? Oh, hello. Hello, new viewer, whoever ye be. I don't know who ye be. <laughs> um, then have two Mulan pins. First off, we have... Who is this? We have Mushu and Kriki. I think this would make a nice Chinese New Year pin, actually. But it would have to be... 2024 for Year of the Dragon. That's the next Chinese Year of the Dragon, anyway. And this is actually a set. You're unfamiliar with Timothy Mouse. I think you need to see Dumbo. He's so cute, so sweet. I love him. Um, but here's the new set of new set of princess pins. I know, I know it's blurry, I'm sorry. Um I did say I really love the Snow White one, but at the time they didn't have them in uh, Animal Kingdom. But I got all these from the same stall. Uh, but yeah, there's a very nice new set about this. I'll have to see if I can get them on Facebook. I did see them later on, but I never picked them up because I'm stupid. I told you I'm stupid. You do need to see that. Have you never seen it? Oh. You know, I said I went to see Mary Poppins Returns, which I absolutely love. The trailer, oh, no. They were showing trailers for the new Dumbo and the new Lion King. They're horrible trailers. They uh, almost ruined me. The trailer alone was enough to ruin me. Um, so if I want the Snow White one in the future, it will be 120 on eBay. Will it? Have you had a look already? It's You've seen oh, you've seen these new these this new set of princesses, have you? Is that what you're talking about? Anyway, when was that? Oh yes, um, the only limited edition pin I got because I didn't get many pins this time. Not like last time I went the whole hog. Um, was the um, what is it? Beauty and the Beast. Happy Holidays, 2018. Bella and Lumiere. It's pin on pin, as you can see. I don't know what the LE number is though. I might have to take this off. Do, 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 do. See what we got. Come on. Come on. Come on. It is LE of 3,500. And I can't get it back on the card. Do you know why I can't get it back on the card? Because I'm in Egypt. There we go. Do, 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 do. Back on we go. They are what? What are they, Wes? You have seen them on your... The, oh, the trailers are much to be desired. 
You're a pretty presum presumptive snoofer, are you? Okay. <laughs> also from Animal Kingdom. Now, this isn't my chain. I have a bracelet of my own, but this was just for transportation out of ease because my mum had this in her purse and um, I bought six charms, which I don't know. Did I actually show you these, Wes? Did I send these pics to you or did I not? I can't remember. But in any case, first off, let me just see. We have the Cheshire Cat with um, little dangling arms. It's so goofy, so cute. And they tended to come with little gemstones as well. These were about $7 per charm, which I know that seems pricey. You believe I did one spun around? No. Uh, what one? What one pin or one charm? Because three of them spin. Um, where's the other one? Where's where's she gone? Where's she gone? Come on, there we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. No, well, it's seven dollars plus tax. I think it's seven percent tax. Yeah, not brilliant. Um, Tinkerbell, which is very very fuzzy it is actually green oh and there's oh no uh the trick of the light <laughs> i thought there were gems on the other side but there weren't so i've got here there's ariel and that spins uh, i won't i'll just spin the whole thing because ursula's on the other side i also got the cinderella one Oh, flipping heck. There we go. Cinderella. I'm not very good at this. Lady Tremaine on the other side. Um, I got Alice. Oh. Her. Alice there. And the Queen of Hearts on the other side. And my favourite of the charms wherever she be. For some bizarre reason, this one was gold and the others were silver. The villain hero spinny one. Yeah, I know. I, I fell in love with them. Um, on my last day at Disney, I did actually see the Aurora and Maleficent one, but I couldn't justify spending all that time in a queue for one charm when I can just get it at a later date and save myself more hassle. But... <laughs> Whatever. But this is my favourite. Oops. Hang on. Snow White. I don't know why you can see it. That's my favourite one. Because I love Snow White. She's my favourite princess. Although I love all of them. But I think Snow White's my favourite. So there's those. Making things easy here. We shall stick with this. Because I got myself... A new phone case. You can probably see the state of my phone. It's grubby as anything, isn't it? This old case. I've only had it since April. Look at the state of it. That's what work does to you. Um, but I got the Disney Cat Lady one because I'm hoping to get a cat. I want a kitty cat. Um, but there's one problem with this. Phone cases do get grubby. It's their job, I know. But do you know what's wrong with this, Wes? I'll tell you what's wrong with this, is that they've got the Aristocats on it, but they've only got four and not five. They have Duchess and Thomas together, they have Marie, and they have Berlioz. Where's Toulouse? I can't believe it. No time to lose, but you lost the cat. This case was $29.99. $29.99. <laughs> um, I got this from Disney Springs. I also got a jumper, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, would you like to uh, say that in English, please? $29 plus tax. I think tax is about 7%. But yeah, so on here, obviously, we've got Duchess and Thomas O'Malley, Marie Berlioz, Cheshire Cat, Figaro, Oliver, and Cyanam from um, Lady and the Tramp, which I've not seen that for years. I was never a big fan of Cyanam. I thought they were evil cats. I'd rather have Lucifer, if I'm honest with you. What's it made out of? 
well, it's made out of, I suppose, what a normal phone case. Well, it's not plastic. It's more sort of, I don't know, maybe it's, I don't know what it's made out of. I just know that I got it because I saw it. I couldn't resist it. I had to get it. <laughs> Shoot me. I know I'm not very good at justifying myself. Now, next, we have a jumper that's covered in uh, strange substances. I know we are Siamese, if you please. I know I can't say I'm going to make it rain, but this is England, and it always rains in England, so who actually cares? Right. So, a very nice jumper. Uh, so this was from also from Disney Springs. Very, very cute. It was... Oh, $49.99. Proof. <laughs> yeah. I know it was ridiculous. I think together they're about 84 including tax. But I, th I thought this was a really cute jumper, so I had to get it. Why are you a gorilla? <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's so cute. But Disney Springs, I didn't think was anything really special. That was, again, like Magic Kingdom, unless you're really rich or really young. They didn't really... Oh, unless you really like football, because they had a football shop. But they didn't have anything Everton, and my dad supports Everton. <laughs> you want to be like me? I don't think so. <laughs> so no, that's, that actually looks quite big. Because I've lost weight, I'm now, I've gone from... a an extra large to a medium, and that looks quite big for a medium, unless US sizes are that different. I don't know. Anyway, next on the agenda, figurines. But I'm looking for some, there's 13 of them. So I, I don't think it matters what size you are as long as you're a nice person, Wes. <laughs> Um, anyway, I've got, what have I got on my, oh yeah, I've got 13 figurines on my table. So would you like to choose a number between 1 and 13? <laughs> choose, just choose a random number and that's what we go for. I'll give you the chance to make your preferences known. Hmm. Number 8, okay. Okay, oh flipping it, be very, very careful. Now, this was from Animal Kingdom, and obviously, but it's a musical snow globe. It's Peter Pan and Wendy. And it plays, you can try. For the Peter Pan's flight attraction. And it's got his hands up. Because I don't have much Peter Pan stuff. I've only really got, I've got a small Olszewski Nana ornament, and I've got Peter, then again, we've got Peter and Wendy, haven't I? So, hmm. anyway, so there's that. This was, no, I took the prices off, so I'm not entirely sure what that was. I was worried, though, that that was not going to make the journey because it didn't come in polystyrene like all the others, just came in this loose white box, but packed it up with... There's a load of, like, brown, weird stuff, plus socks and undies to pad the box out. So the box arrived a bit crushed, but everything is in one piece. And I think that's because my mother borrowed Newt Scamander's suitcase. Um, it's probably closer to 50. I, I don't know. I can't remember, Wes. Um, number between 1 and 12. So that was number 8 for the very small Peter Pan collection. Actually, why do I say small Peter Pan collection? Because I've got loads of Tinkerbell. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, this one, I'm pretty sure she came out two years ago. And I've wanted her ever since. And then I saw her and I just thought, you know what? I'll have to get her. But this and another one, I'm not sure which, is a Christmas present of my parents. But this gorgeous Mulan. I'm trying to get her all in there. It's quite difficult and you can't see very well, but she's all sparkly on her dress as well. This is obviously showcase. It's absolutely gorgeous. I, again, don't know what her... Um... 
Oh, flipping heck. Do you know what? I've lost my train of thought. I have lost my train of thought. Anyway, my mother pointed out to me something I myself hadn't noticed, and that's the little gems on her hair comb. I'd never noticed that before, but then a picture never does it justice. A picture will never do the actual product justice, unfortunately. Okay, number between one and 11. What's, what about a train? Is Mulan on the train? It's a Chinese train. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. This is a park exclusive, and this was from Magic Kingdom. We found a place. No, no, it wasn't. Sorry, it was from Hollywood Studios. I'm lying. Um, speaking of trains, we've got Dopey in um, a mine cart. Now, this could be one of two things. This could be the um, Seven Dwarves Mine Train ride, or we could even, but then again, if it had a little light on it, could be honoring the Main Street Electrical Parade because Dopey is in the mine cart in the parade. Um, obviously, it's got the little lamp dangles. It's just so cute. I can't remember. Yep, yeah, no price on it. But there's Dopey. Cause I don't, I've only got one. Nope, tell a lie. I've got two dwarf ornaments. A movie roundy lantern. <laughs> a movie roundy lantern, is that what we're calling it? A movie, I've never heard of a movie roundy lantern. Um, number between one and 10. I apologize for my state of undress. I know, I'm not well. Thou shouldest to think of the price. Um, that one was probably 45. I'm not sure, maybe it, hang on. No, it might not have been that expensive. The other one might have been, but that might not. Go on, number between one and ten. Look, oh no, it was the light. I thought my hair was sticking up. <laughs> he's snoofling in the bin. What do you mean he's snoofling in the bin? Oh, well, thank you, but uh, these are actually me jammers. Yeah, <laughs> these are actually me jammers. Um, so it doesn't matter how nice my attire is, it's bedwear. But I wore this two years ago and it was a little bit of a struggle to get them on. And then I looked and it's a 12 to 14 and that's why it fits me now and it didn't fit me then. Yay, because I lost three stone. <laughs> Um, number three. Well, what do you mean, Mr. Oh, so snoofling in the bin? Oh, he was sniffing in the bin. I thought he meant he was snoring, but he was in the bin. How does that work? Um, there is none. No food in the bin? You ate a weight loss. Number three. Oh, you'll love this one. You know what I said? That, I sent you that picture from Flickr. Well, guess what my dad found in Fantasyland in Magic Kingdom in, I can't remember the name of it, but it's by Gaston's Tavern, so it's in the Beauty and the Beast bit. And that's where I got the Mulan from, actually. But this one, ta-da! It's Alice in the cat on the Caterpillar ride. Um, we did have to go through, a oh no. Oh, we did have to go through a couple of boxes, because she again, she had blue on her petticoat or her apron, but I've got this one, I'm so happy, I love this. I saw it, I'm like, I have to get it. Even if I get nothing else, I have to get this one because it's obviously a park exclusive. I actually managed to get it, yes. But I'm not sure if maybe it was, a, oh, I didn't notice the eye of scrutiny right there on the cat, uh, the uh, caterpillar. Um, yes, I was riding Alan Rickman, <laughs> I know. I, who actually voiced the original Caterpillar? I'm curious about that. I don't know who that was. Um, again, no price. And they don't have uh, dates on them either. I thought they might have done, but they don't. Um, what's left? Um, one, between one and nine. Who are you?
Yes, I'm not a very good caterpillar. I don't smoke a pipe. I don't smoke the snarf black. So I don't. <laughs> uh, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I mentioned the snarf black, which was a bit of a mistake because I just. Uh, and you said five. You saw it coming. It's Ariel. <laughs> I absolutely love this. And nothing can do justice to her skirt. But she, how gorgeous is she? She's absolutely beautiful. And there's just glitter all over her skirt. I don't know how well you can see it. I know the resolution's rubbish. But absolutely gorgeous. I wish I knew. Actually, I'll tell you one thing. This was from one of the gift shops. Always struggle. I don't know what it is. I think it's because she's part mermaid, but every time I get an aerial ornament, Little Mermaid, she never goes in the box properly. And I think it's because she's part mermaid. She's got a fin. She's a bit slippery. Little Miss Fishy over here. But she's just gorgeous. I love the expression on her face. She's just so young and so innocent. She's gorgeous. Oh, I didn't realise sort of the trim around the ruffles on a dress. Richard Hyden. Oh. He was in the sound of, who was he in the sound of music? Who was he in the sound of music? Because I've seen that film so many times. Okay, number between one and eight. Oh, guess what? You said glitter is evil. You're right. I got glitter all over my all over my mitts. <laughs> oh, do you know what? Ugh. Oh, I've got a mouth like Gandhi's flip flop. My mouth is that dry. <laughs> oh god. Go on, choose a number between. What did I say? One and eight. Yeah, there's five there. Number between one and eight. I don't know why I got 13. I suppose I got 12 and one for luck. He was Max. Ah. Hmm, how interesting. That's very, very interesting. Ooh, I'll tell you what else is interesting. This one was the, was the only one on the shelf, and it actually arrived two days before I bought it. And I think it's a new one because they weren't getting any more in stock until January. And be prepared. It's just gorgeous scar with uh, Shenzi Banzai and Ed on his. Oh, he's even got um, he's even got swirlies on his belly. Look at the size of that tail. Look, look at that bushy tail. You could ride that tail and pretend you're Harry Potter. Oh, what's a low? Farewell, sweet Polly Styrene. My friend Polly, Polly Styrene. Um, yeah, I was, I was so surprised by this. I'd never seen it before, so I can only assume it's new. But it's gorgeous. And I've only got, I think, two um, Lion King ornaments. So. That that will go there then. <laughs> Number between one and seven. Yeah, what have I got? I've got Simba and Nara on Pride Rock. And I wanted to say I've got a little baby Simba, but I don't know. <laughs> Polystyrene, Annette Curtin, and Patty O'Dor. I've never heard of Patty O'Dor. That was a good one. I've never heard of that before. Or Annette Curtin, for that matter. So, six. Ah, you'll another one you'll quite like, I think. It's another exclusive. When I can very slowly. There we go. It's Cheshi in a teacup. This was from um, Animal Kingdom that I got with the Peter Pan snow globe. Yeah, name puns. Yeah, kneel down. Stand up. Yeah, Dwayne Pipe or Dwayne the Bathtub, I'm Drowning. Um, yeah, 
Here's Cheshire Cat. I thought he was out of circulation because I'd never seen him anywhere before except eBay, and he was always really, really expensive. But I guess not. I bet I guess they have him in the parks. But I can only assume this is a um it's a, the obviously the mad tea party ride. Oh, and by the way, I went to the Cheshire Cafe, which is opposite the teacup ride where you can meet Alice in Magic Kingdom. And they had some very strange slushies going on. So we had a pink and purple Cheshire Cat slushy with a rock candy straw. Very, very strange. Very strange, but not unpleasant. So there goes the Cheshire Cat. Number between one and six, please. It did taste nice. It didn't taste like watermelon, though. Three. Three, 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 three. Oh, you've got this thing about uh, attractions, haven't you? You've got this thing about park exclusives because it's another one. And this one I need to be careful with because it's a bit big. Now, I do have a flying Dumbo. I've got a smaller tradition. And I've got the Brito Dumbo tradition, which is very big. I got it for my birthday for my parents. And here's Mickey riding Dumbo. It's really, really cute. I thought I'll have to get this. I know there was one with Mickey inside a little train, but um, I uh, I never got that one. And Thinking back on it now, I don't think there'd have been any any room in it, but I did get this one. This was actually massive. I'm telling you, this one was massive. I know I have to keep getting up and down, but what can you do? And I know that... Uh, uh, I don't know at all, apparently, because guess what? I forgot what I was going to say. So does it matter? What have we got left? Five. Number between one and five? But you should mention hot diggity dog as well. As long as it's not deputy dog. Ah, this one. Now I love how goofy this one is, and that's not a pun because it's not goofy. But this is a different side to a paranoid seafaring man. Now, let me know what you think. I absolutely love this. I think it's so goofy. It's Captain Hook at a masquerade ball with the TikTok Crocs mask. It's just so cute. Because <laughs> I thought, I don't have any Captain Hook and I do quite like him. No, he's not a paranoid seafaring goofy. He's a paranoid seafaring villain with a literal feather in his hat. Look, it's a proper feather. But I just thought, because look at the, the expression on his face. You look, he actually looks happy to be there. Even though he's got a crocodile's mask, he's actually happy about it. He's not, he's not hiding behind Mr. Smee or anything. I know I like Captain Hook too. Of course, not my favorite villain. I don't actually have my favorite villain. In a fig in figurine form, my favourite male villain because you know I've, I've got two. Well, it's, it's technically three because it's technically two favourite females, but you know I want to move it. But they don't have any figurines of them at the moment, as far as I know. Um, Captain Hook is able to laugh about his misfortune, about his incident. Yeah, he is pretty awesome. He is awesome. I'll give you that. Um, what have I got left? Number between one and four. In the hope that you haven't been kicked out for two and a, you can't have two and a half, you silly person. What do you want, two or three? You can't have two and a half. It don't work like that. You can't, that, that would be spoiling it. That would be spoiling it, you naughty, naughty man. 
Oh, so if you're gonna have two and a half, you'll have one, okay. This is a big bugger. It's a big bugger. It is quite goofy in one respect. And also features my scale twin, as uh, Ariel was kind enough to point out to me <laughs> when I met her on, when did I meet? Thursday. I think Thursday was the 27th. And I've wanted this for a, quite a while, actually, ever since it came out. Kiss the girl. I absolutely love this. And we've got... We got Sebastian singing. We got little, there's my scale twin, Flounder. <laughs> yeah, because I, I know. I was Disney Bounding as Rosella, and uh, she called me Flounder scale twin. I know, I like Sebastian. I, need, I think we need to have Sebastian on his own. Actually, I know. I need the Jumbo Zodiac Sebastian pin. That'll sort it out because he's the character for cancer, yay! But there's that one. Which is, I don't know where that one's gonna go, because it's massive. I'm trying to rearrange everything on this kitchen counter, I don't think I've got the room. Um, what have I got left? Number between one and three. And don't say one and three quarters like Lenny Henry on The Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> what, what time is it? Oh, five past seven. Five past seven. To think I've been away since, what would it be? Five past one Saturday afternoon. <laughs> I don't get that. Two. Oh, okay. Well, I gotta, I need to take a drink. I told you I got a mouth like a sweaty sock. I'll be back in a minute. And that's what? Oh, that was quick. Mind you, you're a man, you don't need to take anything off, do you? So, two. Ah, uh, okay. How do you feel about Froggingtons and aliens? I didn't have any stitch ornaments, right? But I thought, I've got to get one. And I love the expression, the frog's just like, please put me down. So I had to get this one. They did have one where he was reading The Ugly Duckling. But I thought this one with the frog was so cute. Because the frog just looks so hopeless. Like, someone help me. <laughs> I actually think that Lido and Stitch is quite a funny film. But I've only seen it once or twice. I didn't actually watch it for years until after it came out. No, watch it until... I don't watch it until years after it's released. Does that even sound like proper English? I'm paranoid now. I don't know if it sounds like proper English or not. I don't know. You've got two left, Wes. One or two. I don't even know why I bother keep sitting down. Oh, I know why I keep sitting down. So the... I'm in front of the camera, that's why, isn't it? Yay! That's why I'm in front of the flipping camera. No, no that's why I keep standing up and down. And down. Yo, yo! You're not good at English ever. One. Okay. Okay, this is one of the first I got. And I've been wanting it ever since it was released. It's Jack and Gus in the teacup. It's so cute. I'm a bit dubious about picking it up by the handle, but ooh, what's that? There's some fluffy stuff on my hand. 
This is so cute. As I say, I just had to get it. And I like how simple the design is as well. Like around here, it's just it's just there basically. I don't tell the lights on the hats and it's on Jack's coat. But I love these two little fellas. They're so cute. Especially because he's a chubby. He's a chubby little. Oh, here's a one for you. Can you remember what Cinderella actually called Gus originally? Gus was his nickname. Can you remember what Cinderella called him? There's a question for you. I wouldn't say the handle looks temperamental. I would say the handle looks ornamental, if anything. Um, what? <laughs> oh, my last one. How the heck do I get this? Because this one, I think because it's, uh, it seems to be a bit older, so it comes with documentation that it probably otherwise wouldn't. Um... By the way, while you're pondering it, I believe Cinderella called him Octavius and then said, but for short, we'll call you Gus. So his name was actually Octavius. Makes me wonder what Jack's real name was. And Susie and Perla and Mary. And this last one, oh, hang on. This one actually, this one comes with the card. Flirtatious peg, in the hope that it's actually the right way and not back to front, like they tend to do on, um, what is this? Webcam. Well, built-in webcam, not an actual webcam. And then it also comes with this. It's like a sort of authenticity certificate. But this one's about dogs. To every dog owner, his dog is the best dog on God. Try again. The best dog on dog in the world. And I felt the same way myself. I've had all sizes, shapes and breeds. I'll wager your dog is devoted to you and your family. And this affection seals a friendship that is pretty universal. In fact, dogs are known and loved in every land. That's a quote from Disney. Whether barking, panting, fetching or just being a devoted pal, dogs are lovable playmates. And Disney animation has long showcased man's best friend. Disney aficionados and dog fanciers everywhere will adore these best-in-show canines. Oh, yeah, because this is part of a set. Mickey's faithful, fun-loving pal Pluto, Lucky Puppy and his spotted Dalmatian family, and the almost all-canine cast of Lady and the Tramp are just a few of the dogs featured in this dog-on-delightful collection of endearing animated dogs. Every bit as irresistible as those mooching mutts and pedigreed pooches themselves this pure blood collection makes for a delightful kennel full of floppy-eared, eager to please Disney canines. Because this came with a bone base to make room for four dogs and Cy and Am. So it's not Pluto, it's not Pluto. It's Peg from Lady and the Tramp. She's so cute. She's a bit goofy. I think she was voiced by Peggy Lee. I think that's why she got her name. I know this has got a crack in it. It's supposed to have a crack in it. It's the design. It's all the way around. Because I I got paranoid at first. Um, but I'm so happy to have her because I think she goes for... Some people pay for like 100 quid for her on eBay and I think... If she's still in circulation, why is that? But anyway, that's the ornament haul. And now, there's some other stuff to deal with. Because starting off now, he's a mischievous, he is a tramp, but they love him, yeah. He is. She had a really good voice. She actually voiced Darling in that film as well. So she voiced the human owner and uh, Peg. Now, anyway, I've got quite a mischievous little friend over here. And I, I, I call him, you've heard of the book Thief? Not so sure about books, but he is a little bit of a thief. Is a Mr. Niffler. I'm going to call him Magpie. 
because nifflers like shiny things and magpies like shiny things. So I got my niffler and he's actually, um, it's actually a Velcro coin, so you can take it off him because we know what nifflers are like. But he's so soft. I don't know where I'm going to put him. I don't know if I'm going to have him on my bed or on top of my wardrobe with all my Disney ones. I don't know. But I do at least have him now because, yeah, I know I've told you before, I think, haven't I? If I could have any pet in the Wizarding World, I would want a Niffler. They're just so cute. I can't get over how cute they are. Um, so there's Magpie and Niffler. And you can go over there for now. Uh, do you want to hazard a guess? Did I tell you how many books I bought? Or do you want to guess? Because I can go through again. Or I can just go in order of what's on the pile. Uh, try multiplying that by one and a half. It's nine books. <laughs> I actually got nine books. So just go in order or do you want to choose again? If you want to choose again, then it's a number between one and nine. Because you know the majority of what's here. Number six, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no. You saw it, didn't you? You you knew it. You knew it. Uh, I'm not so sure I trust you because you're quite naughty. Because the number you chose just so happens to be the one I really wanted, didn't it? And you just chose that out of a random pile of nine books and you chose the Barnes and Noble, Leatherbound, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and other stories. This book is massive. Look, absolutely massive, about 1,200 pages. Just a 1,200 pages. Um, I think it's illustrated as well. It's got a pink bookmark. Um, I'm not so sure if I should get it out now or leave it to a later date. And I'm also wondering if I should do a read through of this on YouTube. I know you'd probably want me to do Harry Potter, wouldn't you? I don't think it's a strange coincidence. I think you're just a bit crafty, personally. Um, but yeah, these were, what they were actually, is the day I bought, well, they bought some of them. They're actually um, buy one, get one half price. So considering the size, this was the full price one. And another one I got, um, I, I paid less than $40 instead of more than 50 so yeah, there's the Alice one. We've got Cheshire Cat on the spine, because you know this was the cover I wanted. You know that, and there's the back of it. And it's just, it's really, really heavy. I actually put three hard cover books in a backpack. Five kilos, did not kill your back. Yeah, I, I wasn't keen on the pink cover. I preferred the smaller version with the purple color but yeah i got this blue one i'll keep like so i'll keep it in the cellophane for now but there's that right number between one and eight <sighs> yeah there was the way alice was stylized in the pink cover i just didn't like it okay you're sticking to a theme here, aren't you? Because this is the one I got half price with Alice, which was a Wrinkle in Time trilogy. And it's so glittery. Look at that. This one's about, what did you say? It was 600 and odd pages. And the books are A Wrinkle in Time, A Wind in the Door, and A Swiftly Tilting Planet. So this could be fun to read. Again, silver page. Oh, no. Sorry, Alice has silver pages. This one has gold pages. So I know how very shiny this one is. 
and looks like we've got is that is that a Pegasus who thinks he's a centaur or a centaur who thinks he's Pegasus? I'm sure I'd find out when I read this. Be careful because I know. I know. I'm not as daft as I look, you know. <laughs> so there's a wrinkle in time. Um, number between one and seven? Well, not necessarily. Not if I'm careful. I haven't got metal on my fingers from hitchhikers. <laughs> Number two, okay. So these ones, uh, strangely enough, these are paperback. Now, you know I normally feel about paperback, but I really like these covers. And this one, for some bizarre reason, I think, because they were inside a carrier bag inside the suitcase. So probably got a tiny little bit damaged, but you can't expect miracles. But anyway, this is... Arcturus Books. This is the Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Um, you know, I want I want to start. You know how I want to read, but I always want to read classics. So I'll try the Scarlet Letter. Um, the elderly husband of Hester Prynne returns unexpectedly to their New England village to find his wife nursing an illegitimate baby and wearing a Scarlet Letter A for adulteress embroidered on her dress. While her husband embarks on a vengeful hunt for the child's father, Hester refuses to name him because he holds a respected position in the Puritan community. In desperation, the lovers make a secret plan to flee to Europe with their young daughter. And then, I can't read the rest of the blurb, because some nutter put two flipping labels over it. Look at that, honestly. But this, um, it's actually written in British English because it's got use in it. Like the word rumour. Oh, no. What's this? Go on. What have you said? Uh, I'd rather you didn't use language on my uh, videos, Wes, please. <laughs> I know I do. I'm sorry, but I, yeah, it's okay, I'll leave that there, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know how to do it, oh, oh, hang on, quickly, 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 softly, slowly, catching monkey, I need to plug myself in, why myself for sound, because my laptop is at 14%, and I can't. Why can't I do this? Come on, get in there. Aha, there we go. Right. We're charging. Okay. But, yeah, I I would have... Finished. It's just that tiny little bit of... I'm just, just there. Just there, just there, just there. Um, I don't know how many pages it is. Ah! Do you know something? I like the number of pages in this. And do you know why? Because it's 222, which looks like three little ducks. And you know I like ducks, and duck, it, the duck is my primal zodiac. I love ducks, they're so cute. Um, yeah, I, well, it might not necessarily be different, but it's all about, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But anyway, there's the Scarlet Letter. So I look forward to reading that. Number between one and six. Quack indeed. Don't come the rubber duck with me, you plastic swan. Three. Okay. I got here a book. Well, I, I do worry a bit when I take the uh, cellophane off this because the price is currently covering something that I think is rather undesirable. But I thought, because of what was in it, I thought it was probably worth the money. It's the book of Penny Dreadfuls, um, Sensational Tales of Terror. But some of the, I think some of the classic novels are actually Penny Dreadfuls. I wanted to say... Um, 
that Oliver Twist started off as a Penny Dreadful. It was a serial, anyway. When I say serial, I'm not talking Tony the Tiger with his Frosties. Um, so the pages. Um, we've got a candle on the spine. And shocking. Penny Dreadfuls collects 20 terrifying sensation stories from the Victorian era. In addition to stories by Edgar Allan Poe, Bram Stoker, Arthur Conan Doyle and Washington Irving, its selections include The String of Pearls, or Sweeney Todd the Demon Barber of Fleet Street, by James Malcolm Rymer, Frankenstein, or The Modern Prometheus, by Mary Shelley, Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, by Robert Louis Stevenson, Lost in a Pyramid, or The Mummy's Curse, by Louisa May Alcott, who actually wrote Little Women, so it's strange that she would be writing Penny Dreadfuls, and The Diary of a Madman by Guy de Maupassant. So, and this is probably short stories, but I think they could be quite interesting. So that's why I got that. I'm going to need to separate that, separate the paperbacks. Um, right, one and five. Yeah, I'm not really familiar with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, actually. I worry, when I saw Washington Irving, I wonder if that's Sleepy Hollow. I quite like the film. One, two, three, four. Okay. So I know you said... Oh, God, it's another big book. I know you said about the Brothers Grimm fairy tales, but there was a version of this that was already open, and I looked at the contents and I thought it'd be interesting to read the originals of these fairy tales. So I got The Snow Queen and Other Winter Tales. I think The Snow Queen was written by Hans Christian Andersen, actually. I could be wrong. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. This is so gorgeous. Again, silver pages. Um, got snowflakes all on the cover and the spine. And there's a stag. Stag on the spine. Um... And at the back, the Snow Queen and other winter tales collects 100 fairy and folk tales from around the world that share the winter theme of Hans Christian Andersen's classic story, The Snow Queen. In addition to tales by Andersen, the Brothers Grimm, Charles Dickens, Louisa May Alcott and Oscar Wilde, and selections from Andrew Lang's colourful fairy books, this volume includes Alexandra Dumas' The History of a Nutcracker, the story adapted for the famous Christ Christmas ballet The Nutcracker, Although these tales are set in the heart of winter, they offer reading pleasures that can be enjoyed the whole year round. So there's the Snow Queen, which I'm, I'm really looking forward to going through this, seeing what's, what's going on. Oh, God. Uh, number between one and four. <laughs> oh, I'm aching now. God, am I aching now. Flipping it. All this stretching and twisting and turning. I'm not used to it after three weeks of doing now. <sighs> four again. You've got this thing about the number four you have, haven't you? Uh, you may appreciate this. Um, because I have the first two. Now, I don't know why the fourth book hasn't come out yet. I don't know why it hasn't. It should do, but it hasn't. But anyway... I know you'll like this one, when I can, oh, because it is the illustrated version of The Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, like I say, I've got Philosopher's Stone and I've got Chamber of Secrets. I'm a bit dubious about Chamber of Secrets, though, because of, uh, for who will likely be found within the pages. Certain things, if someone has a morbid fear of something, they shouldn't be able to see that thing. Does that make sense? Um, but yeah, this is, ugh. this was another one that added to the five kilos in a rucksack. That's, that's why my back's so bad, actually, isn't it? Seeing Jim Kay's illustrations moved me profoundly. I love his interpretation of Harry Potter's world, and I feel honoured and grateful that he has lent his talent to it that Rowling said herself. Um, I don't know, how much was this? I wanted to say it was about 20 or $30. Oh, 
but I'm not sure. I don't know. Oh, 39.99. It was 40, sorry. Good, good. Oh, God bless how comes out next year, does it? Good. Looking forward to that. Um, some of the, where is it? Like that's, there you go, chapter nine, Grim Defeat. How lovely is that? I don't know if you've seen, have you seen these, Wes? Have you seen these um, illustrated ones? They're just gorgeous. Oh, I like that one, actually. You've got a whole page dedicated to the Grindylo. He is a very talented, um, ah, teapot into tortoise. We call him tortoise because he taught us. But um, yeah, so I got, uh, what's it? I want to say Prosper Stage, Prisoner of Azkaban, of course it is. Um, dust jacket got a little bit uh, in the rucksack, but could be worse. Um, and now I have nowhere to put it. I have to put it back down. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Right, three books left. <laughs> or maybe the year after. I read the artist blog. He said he started. Go oh, okay. God, my back is hurting. Okay, number two. Thomas Hardy, Tess of the Durbervilles. Another one from, see, the, it says Arcturus on the paperback one that looks very similar to this one, but this one says Sweetwater Press, but on the inside, I think it says Arcturus. Where is it? Yeah, Arcturus Holdings Limited. But on the spine, it says Sweetwater Press. I don't know. Maybe it's just a different thingamajig. Oh, we've got Stonehenge there. But Tess of the Durbervilles. Thomas Hardy's beautiful and spirited heroine is driven to her tragic end by three men who betray her trust. John Derbyfield, her drunken, feckless father. The seducer, Alec Durbeville, who leaves Tess pregnant at 16 with a son that dies in infancy. And Angel Claire, the unforgiving husband who rejects her. Abandoned in so many ways, Tess suffers all the hypocrisy and injustice of Victorian morality that Hardy himself despised. Sounds like he was a bit of a feminist. When Angel returns from abroad, humbled and hoping for reconciliation, Tess makes a fateful bid to be reunited with the one person she has never ceased to love. That's going to be hard... I imagine that's going to be a hard read, but it does sound really um, I think I like a, I suppose I quite like a lot of drama. Yeah, you know, I've got loads of dark thoughts that always plague my mind. It sort of makes sense to me. This does make sense. Obviously, I did want the There were four others I wanted, but they didn't have any of them in stock, which was a shame. Two books left. You're watching the stream at the tea table. Why? Well, it'll be over soon. I got two books left. You want one or two? Both are classics, if that tells you anything. Number one. Okay. Bit of Oscar Wilde. The Picture of Dorian Gray. And again, I can't read the blurb properly because they, why, do, why, why would you put labels? It's a place to label people of all things. But why would you put labels right there when no one can see the whole synopsis of the book? I don't get it. But this is 219 pages. So it's the same length as the Scarlet Letter. Picture of Dorian Gray. Apparently, this is quite funny. You just, you can't leave me for food, honestly. At 18, the handsome Dorian Gray has his portrait painted, which prompts an admirer, Lord Henry Watton, to declare that life is nothing without beauty and sensuous gratification. Suddenly scared of growing old and ugly, Dorian makes the fateful wish that the painted image should age rather than himself. Then, fearless of the consequences, he launches on a life of excess and depravity. And now... 
I can only read part of the bottom bit because people aren't awesome. But apparently this is a good one to start reading for classics. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's that. And the last one is by Alexandre Dumont, who wrote The Three Musketeers. And it's going to take me a heck of a lot of time to get through this book. Oh, look at that. This huge, The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, this is going to, yeah, that's going to be a very heavy read when I finally get to it. Um, absolute madness. I wonder how this compares to The Three Musketeers. Obviously, I've not read the book, but. I so, I suppose. It's, did I see the film? Because I, I watched the Man in the Iron Mask. I've seen that, and that does feature the Three Musketeers. All I'm seeing though now is Gerard Depardieu naked, hanging himself, or trying to hang himself. But the beam broke because John Malkovich knew he was going to do something daft, so he saw the beam before he could do something silly. Now, this one is about the same size, I think, as Alice in Wonderland. So, um, yeah, it's probably about 1,200 pages in itself. I know, it's a huge book. I, I bet the abridged version is about that thick because apparently abridged versions are just where they've got rid of excess descriptions of surroundings and streets but that's like I said that's hearsay I don't know I don't know because I've never had that myself but surely this has got to be better than the book I can't stand and you know how I feel about that book I don't like it the 85 page one the John Steinbeck one I'm so sorry to anyone that loves of mice and men I hate it are abridged awful? I don't know. I've never, as far as I know, I haven't read an abridged version. Unless Of My Sin Men was abridged, but I'd rather not read the original, to be honest with you, because I don't like it. <laughs> <coughs> of My Sin Men, well, whatever. I, yeah, I really don't like it. I think the, now what it was, I think it's because we had to study it in school, you, you had to do it. And because you have to do it, you don't feel, no, you can't get into it. It's like they did Sherlock Holmes in year eight and I couldn't get that. As It was the speckled band, but it's the way they get you to dissect everything I'm like, no, can't I just analyse this in my own time, please? Can't I just read it later on and then start writing an essay on it? Like, you know what I've said about the Harry Potter chapters and how I I take it, I, I dissect everything. I flip in, what do I do? I, I tear things apart and I put things together again, like a great big, huge puzzle. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, that was my holiday haul. Me rambling on about nothing for an hour. How's that, eh? Rambling on about, what do you mean lots of detail? Lots of detail in the book or lots of detail off me? Because if it's lots of detail off me, then it's all completely irrelevant. All completely irrelevant. And there's no elephants here. That's irrelevant. There's Dumbo. I've got a Dumbo backpack. That's what it was, it was Dumbo. The books are irrelevant, apparently. A lovely holiday. Yeah, but it's nice to be back home. Especially that flight home, that was awful. So I didn't suffer last time, but seriously, this one, I don't know what it was. I think I just had a lot of salt because, I don't recall it last time, but this time, Everything I ate in America, it was just covered in salt. It was either 
overly salty or too much sugar. And both of those things are bad for you. They both make you ill. And I decided when we went to the cinema yesterday, you get this big tub of popcorn and it was so salty. So it's probably no wonder I got ill. But even the, the airplane food was salty. So there was that too. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why everything's so salty because even the gammon I had for tea tonight it wasn't. And that's normally as salty as anything. Ooh, I just got something interesting from YouTube. I shall have to view that at some point. Um, but yeah, maybe that's why I got sick. That plus the fact that I didn't have my medication. Plus the fact that I didn't have any sleep. Plus the fact that there was a lot of carbon dioxide circulating in the airplane, obviously. But what can you do? But yeah, I was quite ill. It was probably worse because I wasn't physically ill. Sometimes if you're physically ill, it makes you feel better. But, uh, it was, do you know what? Being ill is a good way to get off the plane first. I was essentially the first person off the plane because I wasn't well. So don't worry, they didn't throw me overboard or anything. They didn't chuck me out the window. <laughs> they didn't open the emergency doors and just drop me in the Atlantic. <laughs> I'm like, hey, look, I found the Titanic. No, actually, I would because I can't swim. I just sink but anyway uh disney was okay it, uh, it's a bit tricky really talking about disney now because it's not i don't think it's as good as people make it out to be it's too busy no don't throw me you can't throw someone overboard just for being ill <sighs> But I did, it was really bad. I couldn't even keep my eyes open. I'm just like, if I open my eyes, I might throw up. So I had to just take really deep breaths and keep my eyes shut. And even this, the stewardesses were saying that I really looked ill. I, I said to one of them, I said, nausea is my default complexion. I had to, because I'm so pale. But I suppose you know it when I'm, you know it when I'm ill. I suppose my eyes tell you everything. But they say the eyes are the window to the soul. I know, I'm, I'm talking about rubbish again, talking about nothing. And again, math like a sweaty sock. I need something to drink. And I probably need to finish this stream. And I need to, I don't know. I need to do something. I don't know. At least I'm a bit better now, yeah. It probably helps when you're at home. But I did spend a couple of hours in bed. Like I say, I didn't sleep much. Well, if I did, it wasn't for long. But lying down helps. So I just watched a bit of telly. That's one, one perk of not being very well you can lounge around and watch tally <laughs> so i'll probably end the stream here one or two people came in and out but at least you were here from the start uh so i'll leave you to your chinese i don't know what you've got on if you're having dim sum or or chicken fly lice i don't know what you're having but I just hope you enjoy it. <laughs> um, and if anybody watches this in the next 24 hours, no, no, not 24, sorry. The next 29 hours and 13 minutes. No, 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 no. Sorry. The next 28 hours and 17 minutes, I realized that the cooker, the clock on the cooker is wrong. It defies what it says on my laptop. So if anyone should see this before midnight tomorrow, 
Uh, Happy New Year and a prosperous 2019. Uh, nice being around. Well, nice having you, Wes. <laughs> uh, perhaps we can uh, stream together at some point. I don't know when because you're about to have your tea. And I gotta go somewhere tomorrow. But I'm gonna have to go to A. I don't know. Uh, of course. Of course. Uh, bye bye for now. And bye to everybody else. <laughs> Tatty bye. How do you end these things? Why does it take so long to end these things? Honestly, end them.